Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art this morning, and we're going to paint something a little different, some fabric tote bags. And I love to paint on the canvas uh, sneakers and canvas tote, uh, little zippered bags and things that are a heavier canvas. I have a whole pile of these, um, just a fabric tote bag. I don't even know why I had so many in my stash, but I've been wanting to paint them for a while, so I saw a cool technique um, online that makes it a lot easier that I'm going to show you. So good morning, I see everybody popping in. Thank you so much. This is my segment this morning for Craft Round the Clock, and I'm also on my Tinker's Cart art page. So some of you are probably my Tinker's Cart art peeps, and some of you are um, from Craft Round the Clock. So good morning, and thanks for watching. Please, I have my comments here. Let me know you're here. Say hello. It's thrilling for me to see where people are watching from. Good morning. Um, so anyway, let me show you what we're going to do, and you might want to um, try this as well. These little tote bags are super inexpensive. They make great gifts, teacher gifts, uh, craft show items, whatever it might be. I just painted one the other day with my water lily design, which I've been painting on lots of things. Hi, Pat. Good morning from Maine. I'm in Maine this morning, too. I'm in Wells, heading home to Mass um, in a, uh, when I finish the segment. So good morning. Good morning, Jeanette. Good morning. Um, so I want to do something on a, with a fall theme for this. But what I loved about doing it this way, and I'm going to show you from start to finish how I did that, is many times when you're painting on the fabric, you're putting your acrylic paint on and you have to try to really dig it into the little nooks and crannies of the fabric and to get it to cover. If I'm painting flowers or something, I usually need to get a good base for those petals and then highlight on top of them. Well, I saw a cool couple of um, Instagram reels and people were painting this big square first. So see the big square that's painted? Super simple and I never even thought of it, but it makes a great base to put your paint, your more detailed painting on top. Good morning, Pat. Oh, you're in Kittery Point. I'm in Wells. You're my neighbor to the south. Very close. I um, have a seasonal place here in Wells and I'm here as much as I can. I have to go home today for a couple days, but I'll be back on Thursday. So in the summer, you'll see me broadcasting here from um, my porch many times. So good morning, Joey. Good morning, Darla, Pat, everyone, Jeanette. You guys are great to pop in. I know it's a little bit early. So what I did, I saw, um, let me start from the beginning. So you have your blank little tote bag. And like I said, usually I'd paint right on it with my paints and I'd do flowers and things, try to get them to cover well. Um, so we start with the blank. And then what I did is I simply took my blue, I wore this shirt this morning, don't ask me why, because you know it's going in my paint palette any minute. Um, your, you know, your blue painter's tape or, or whatever tape you have, uh, masking tape, whatnot. And I just taped the square off. So I taped my square off and I did it pretty simply. And let me switch over because you don't need to see my big face. You need to see what I'm doing. And I simply did it without a lot of measuring or anything. All I did was take my ruler. First, first one I eyeballed and that's fine. But if you want a little bit more guide, I just put the ruler across. Um, I'll show you on the blank one because it'll be a little easier. So I simply took my ruler, went across the edges and took a little piece of tape and just taped it down. I did make sure my edge, especially here where the paint is touching, is pressed down pretty firmly. And I'm going to keep an eye here. So any questions as I go, please just shout out. If I don't answer them, I certainly will address them later. This is recorded, of course, and you will find it on both pages after the fact. So do not worry about watching every little thing. You can always re-watch it. That's what's great about the recorded sessions is you can come back and watch them anytime. So if you wanted to get fancy and measure, you could. But if you just use your ruler or something that's a similar size. And like I said, I quickly did it because I wanted to try the uh, project. So I did it with my water lilies, which I've been painting on canvas lately, but I thought this would translate really well. Sorry about this tape noise. I'm sure it's probably awful. Um, hey, Darlene, good morning. And there. So I just pressed it down a little bit and that's your surface. Now, this is pretty thin fabric. Regardless, even if it was heavy, I would slip something inside to uh, absorb the paint that's going to come through the fabric. You don't want it to bleed through on the other side. 
So I just slipped a piece of cardboard and I was doing a few samples last night, so I didn't have a piece of cardboard. So I have an old magazine that I just slipped inside. So I just slip a magazine or a piece of cardboard inside and then I paint the square. These are dry so we can paint the design right on them in a minute. But let me just show you when you're painting your bag. I'm going to grab the magazine from this one because it's a perfect size to pop in there. And just tuck your handles behind or somewhere where they won't get paint on them. And if you're like me, I do get a little messy. So you can even put a big wide piece of tape or a few pieces of tape. And that way you're, you're sure not to get any um, paint on the edge. I did on my last one get a little paint over here. So I simply took some ivory paint and covered it up. You didn't even notice it was there. So we do have to get the paint into the nooks and crannies of the fabric. And that is why I'd like to use my hog bristle brushes. Um, something that's just a little stiffer. This is just a hog bristle brush. Um, it's a filbert, which is the round, the long handled, which is what you'll find them uh, in the craft and art stores in the fine art section, acrylic and oil painting brushes, but they're hog bristle and they great. And they're great for this. Jeanette, I try so hard because I love it when I see people's studios and they're so neat and the paints are lined up by color and everything's, I try, it doesn't work. I, I just work messy. So that's the way it is. Um, Tamara, good morning. I love it that you guys are all popping in. Okay. So if you have a brush that's a little stiffer, even if it's just an old painty brush, if it's a chip brush, you know what? You could use a stencil brush. I just want the paint to really dig into the canvas. And you know what? I'm going to do this black because I have an idea for a really Hall a Halloween, uh, a darker Halloween scene, and that would be best in black. So I know it's dark, but I'm going to use this for something else. So I'm going to just go ahead. And then I just go up against my edge. I'm not going to paint this whole thing for you because you can um, see how it's done. I have the dried ones, but just go up to the edge. And then you're just going to go ahead and cover the whole piece, filling in the nooks and crannies. And that's what you do. Now, I got a little fancier on a couple of mine. Let me show you what I did and I'll show you how I did that. On this one that I'm going to paint on some sunflowers and fall leaves, maybe in pumpkins or whatnot. Can you see the variation? I started with dark purple. I threw in some pinks and some whites, and I just smushed them around as I was painting. I'll show you exactly how I do that. And on my sunflowers, oh, sunflowers, my water lilies, <laughs> um, I got even fancier, and I took my toothbrush and splattered and got these little, um, little bits of splatter and paint just dri dripped on because that's the kind of background I did on those originally on the canvases. So I wanted to kind of copy it. But so what you're doing is as you're going and putting your paint on, if you want to introduce another color, so say I'm going to go for, with white just so you can see how I do it. I just grab a little white. As I'm going and the paint is wet, you can go ahead and add the other color in and very little blending and it blends right in for you. Can you see that? I'm just kind of going light and dark. So on this dark background, which I'll do some kind of spooky Halloween thing, I might throw in some blue too and a little white as I go. And it's wet and wet paint, so it blends super easy. It's not a special technique you need to practice or know how to do. You just put that color in there and blend it how you like. It's very backgroundy, so it's not going to be that anyone's going to notice any little thing that might be wrong. But in painting, there's no right and wrong, right, you guys? It's just whatever goes. So you're going to tape your little tote bag off. You're going to put some heavy uh, paint on there. And you're going to let that dry, because it will take quite a bit of time to dry, because the paint's rather thick. So then we've got our painted piece. That's all dry now. I'm going to slip the cardboard back in there. I really don't think the paint's going to go through at this point. This is a pretty heavy layer. I really doubt it, but just to give myself a little bit of a more a hard surface to paint on, we'll start with that. And the best part is at the end when the, the big reveal, when you peel off the tape it's so cool hey jackie hey charlotte good morning you guys thanks for letting me know where you're painting from um or watching from i would love to see all the different areas that you are from so okay so let's jump in and get started this is great like i said because this is just like any painted surface now when you go to put your paint on you don't have to dig at it to get it to really cover that much i thought um i'm gonna do some yellow sunflowers and maybe some little um some pumpkins maybe some just fall theme and I'm not doing it as a scene and you could, you could do like a nice little uh, still life or something. I'm doing more like a surface pattern design. I'm going to just put little elements here and there upside down sideways. 
making it look like a little, um, just a little design. Hey, Kim, good morning. Sweetie's creation's pretty. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon, for watching. And, and oh, Sina, if I'm saying that right, Camarillo, California, that's, um, you're, you're on the other side, you're on the other coast in Texas. I always have a lot of viewers from Texas. It's someplace I have not been. I've been lots of places, but I have not been to Texas yet. So one of these days. All right, so I'm going to just paint my sunflowers, some little pumpkins. Depending on a dark or light background, you know you might have to base coat a little bit with your acrylics. Good morning, Sheila. So I'm going to do some sunflowers first, and then let's just look at it and see if we maybe want vines or leaves, or you guys can even give me suggestions. I start my sunflowers. I'm going to use one of my hog bristle brushes because I do like the way I get a nice coat with that. Same brush I just showed you, only it's just a little smaller. I paint a lot if you've been watching me at all, dark to light usually. Same thing with my little sunflowers. I'm going to start with kind of a darker orange. I've got uh, on my palette here just some acrylic paints. I've got my regular craft paints. You can use uh, heavy body tubed acrylics if you losing everything but it's back now I hope keep me posted if you can't see I lost everything for just a sec there so these are just my bottled acrylics deco art Americana I like any brand will work I just go by color a lot of times too so um make sure that you're still all there oh Gail good morning um and I just got some other colors that I know are fall like a few shades of yellows um some greens browns burnt sienna I like for the base coat of the um sunflowers so i'm going to mix a little of that with my orange i just want a little darker base these are going to be yellow sunflowers but if i start dark and build up to a light yellow then that yellow really pops so it's kind of a nice way to paint go sort of darkish working slowly to build up to a light and i'm going to just make one stroke petals for my sunflowers i'm just going to press and pull in let me pull this up just real close for a minute so you can see. I am just pressing and pulling in towards the center. I like that because it gives me a little bit of a nice shape for a petal. These will look a little black-eyed Susan-ish actually, so maybe that's what they'll be. If I was to go in between and do more petals, it would be more sunflower looking. But I always go from the outside of the flower in when I have petals like this because I can press the brush, have it thick, pull it, light it light, lightly with it, and get a lighter um, petal shape. It's kind of a cool shape. So I'm just going to put them everywhere. And because this is sort of a repeat pattern design, sort of, I can go right to the edge and just do some little half of flowers showing up. So this may not incorporate pumpkins and, and whatnot at all. Let's just start with this and see where we go. I'm just going to make the base of all my little sunflowers. I am not mixing my burnt sienna and orange together on the palette. I'm just dabbing into each with my brush because that will give me a more natural look. It will be a little darker sometimes. It'll be a little lighter. It'll be more orange. That's what I want. I don't want it to look like I've pre-mixed. And this makes it a lot easier too. So see, I'm just putting a bunch of strokes in towards the center of those little guys. I'm gonna leave space around so we can do leaves, maybe little white daisies in between. Who knows yet? Um, Thank you so much, um, sweeties, creations and decor. I don't know your first name, but thank you for watching. And um, I love to paint and I love to share painting with people who maybe are a little nervous or have not painted before. I want to show you how easy it is to just jump in and start and incorporate it with all your other crafting things because I love to craft too. I'm not um, as good as a lot of you ladies with all your wonderful crafts, but I'm following along and learning so many new techniques. Um, I love the Craft Around the Clock group. If you guys are my uh, Tinker's Card Art people, please check out Craft Around the Clock on Facebook. It is literally all day, five days a week, paint, uh, not that's painting, crafting. And it's so fun. I just listen to it in the car sometimes just because I want to see what people are making. It's so cool. Oh, Sheila. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I just, it's nice to know the names. When you are uh, watching me here on StreamYard, I know it will ask for your permission, and that is what allows me to see your name. So there we have it. The flowers are based in. Just kind of a dark, orangey, rusty color. I like to let it dry just a teensy bit before I start with my next, uh, like a like a burnt, uh, not a burnt sienna, um, a yellow ochre, which I actually did not get out. So let me grab a yellow ochre, kind of a goldy color. I call it yellow ochre, but they call it antique gold. And then I just work from my darker gold right up to a nice bright yellow at, at the end. 
and I like it to blend a little with the background color, but not, um, this is still a little wet. It will drag a lot of color there. So I'm going to do some leaves in the meantime. And while that, while I paint those, this will dry enough, and I go back and uh, pop the yellow on here. I also could use my hairdryer or heat gun to dry, and uh, I do do that. But uh, sometimes I know it's very noisy, and uh, if I don't have to, I won't. But this needed a little something, something right there. Okay. I'm going to just dry the brush off because I don't really need to rinse it in the water. If I'm going to a really light color, I might rinse it off, but I do make sure I dry it really, really well. I don't want water in my brush. I do a lot of dry brush techniques, so I'm always got a paper towel in my hand to dry that brush on. Oh, thank you for following in. I would appreciate it. I'd love it if you guys would follow me. You will see lots of little tutorials and whatnot. And Chris, good morning. I love painting and I love sharing it. I do a lot of painting on my page. I have a YouTube channel. I'm in all the places. And um, I'd love it if you followed me. I have uh, I do a lot of classes online. I do uh, two art memberships online that are fun if you really want to um, level up your painting. So I'm going to go now and I'm going to stop my leaves like in a dark green, just like I did with a darker color for my flowers. I'm going to my flat brush. I like the way I can get a nice... Um, leaf shape with my flat brush. It's just a synthetic. It's not expensive, just a little flat brush. I'm going to start with a dark green. I usually mix up my greens from this dark phthalo green with some cad yellow, which I like. But to start, I'm going to get pretty dark. I'm adding a little black to that dark phthalo green. You're going to hardly see it on this purple background, but boy, will it pop when I get that really lime green, apple green on there. So I, and I'll, let me show you. I'll move this for a minute because this is how I do my leaves. My flat brush is loaded with the paint. I put it down flat, really pressed down. Can you see I'm putting some pressure there? I'm wiggling it a little bit. And if I twist that brush and pull it up, I get a really nice leaf shape. And that does half the work for me. I don't have to form the leaf with three strokes and whatnot. That just starts it for me. And they could be bigger, smaller, littler, a few together like a vine, whatever you wish. I'm just going to simply press and pull. And it's just pressure is making the shape. It's not so much, oh, I don't have, you know, the technique. I don't know how to do it. Press, press hard, lift up very lightly, and you'll start getting a lighter little leaf shape. I like to wiggle it sometimes just to give them a little shape. These are just a basic uh, placement of where they're going to go. And remember, since I'm doing this kind of as a little pattern, I can come right in from the side with leaves, too. I could have just a little half a leaf showing. And like I said, you can put a couple together. This is just random. I'm not planning it out. I don't have an idea in my head. Um, but you could certainly do yourself a little sketch first so you have a little roadmap what you want to do. Sketching is a fabulous way to, I know people are saying, oh, I don't have time to paint and get everything out. I don't have time for art. And I, I love it, but I don't have time. Sketch a little bit to get started. Get a little sketchbook, a pencil, and eraser, and just doodle and sketch and get ideas, and you'll get a little motivated to sit down and paint, too. So I do love to sketch, and I do a lot of classes on sketching, just, just random sketching, sketching ordinary everyday items, urban sketching, just go outside and sketch what you see. And uh, it's a great way to incorporate art into your day. You could be waiting for the kids for the bus, or you could be waiting at a doctor's office, and it it takes no time at all to sit down and, and do some little sketches. That's my sketching public service announcement for the day. <laughs> okay, so I've got some leaves in there. I'm going to go back to my flowers now, and I'm just simply going to go from the dark to the light. I'm going to go to my yellow ochre color, same brush, like I said. I just dried off the paint. I'm going to do sort of the same shape petal. I'm going to just go right on top and pull in. And I'm not looking at every petal I made and going on top of it and, and copying it. I'm simply going to go from the outside in and pull in what's going to be little petals. You still certainly see that orange showing through, right? And it could be here and there. It doesn't have to be as the same exact shape. I'm just getting some you know, lighter yellow on there to start. I want to see all of these colors I'm putting on. So I'm not working hard at trying to cover everything I just did. I'm just simply pulling from the outside in. If I want a thinner petal, I can use the same brush. So this brush is a little thick, but if I go ahead, let me um, just show you. I'm pressing like I did with the leaf. I'm pressing down and pulling in. But if I want to take the brush just vertically and just pull in some little, look at it, you can get some nice thin little petals as well. 
Luckily, this shirt is in the color that I'm painting because if I do get paint all over it, probably won't show. So that brings me to the to the fact people will ask, well, it's fabric. What are you using? What fabric paint are you using? And how are you treating it? And, and what are you doing? And I'm just using my ordinary acrylics. I do it for the sneakers I paint. I do it for whatever I'm painting fabric. Um, because if I got fab, if I got paint on this shirt, do you think I'd ever be able to get it out even if I wanted to? No. So I have never had a problem. Once that paint sets for a few days, it's not going anywhere. So I do not put a fabric medium in or use a special paint. However, if I was to paint maybe a, a light t-shirt, something with a soft hand, you might want to use a fabric paint because it will not be so stiff. I don't generally paint those, but you might in that case. But if I'm painting a heavy canvas little zippered cosmetic bag or purse or sneakers or some, and this is a light fabric uh, from what I usually paint, but uh, the, the paint's not going anywhere. And you could pick any color for the backgrounds of these, which is so fun. You could do them seasonally. You could do Christmas ones. A snowman with the spattered snow with the toothbrush, wouldn't that look cool? If you were spattering, what I did on the one that I was spattering, instead of using a bunch of tape, I cut some paper up and I put it on the edges. And when I spattered, I did not get spattering out here. Although it might look kind of cool to have a little spattering out there. That might be okay too. So you can see now what we've simply done is just painted our flowers in, in that orangey color. Oh, actually, you know what? I was going to show you this maybe anyway, because if um, anyone was interested and you want to know when I go on live, if you go on my texting list, you will be notified. Um, I notified everybody for this last night because I didn't want to send it this early. But I wanted to show you this, too, because there's my little sunflower. So can you see how I've got a little of that orange showing through? And and then I get a brighter yellow. But that is the number. Anyway, if you were interested, um, you could screenshot that. Or I'll put it in the description. I didn't put a description this morning. I was um, I was running a little behind. I was, here's what, how I operate. I run, I get, I get ready so far ahead of time that I start doing projects and then I get behind. Is, am I the only one that does that? It's like, probably, people probably think I'm always running late, but it's only because I've started too soon, really. So anyway. Um, that's that. So again, I'm going to just get lighter and lighter. This is um, a little tacky, so it maybe um, needs to dry a little bit, but let's go ahead and try it. I've got a couple of shades of yellow, but honestly, some of these are so close. I'll just go into this little bit lighter shade. It's going to be subtle. You mightn't see it much, but that's what I like is just for it to subtly get lighter. I'm just going to dab that on there. It's a little bit... I'm going to I'm going to pop the um, hair dryer on it for one second. I'm going to mute it so you don't have to hear. But I want it to be a little drier so the light color pops a little more. So hang on. And I am going to try to not to put my shirt in the thing. I'm going to mute for a second. there. I know how loud it sounds on the video, so that's why I wanted to get that a little quiet. Um, uh, how do I use double screen? I have two cameras. I have, it's a program called StreamYard. It's fabulous. I believe there might be a free version if you want to try it out. And it allows me to, um, I could do double screens. I could do side by side where I'm just as big as this picture, but I really wanted you to see this. Um, and I use my laptop for you see me on my laptop and up above I have my my iPhone. It's pretty simple, really simple. If you have any questions about it, just send me a message. I could tell you uh, more about it. And I really love it for doing these recordings because I can bring my comments from all of my destinations. I can go to multiple destinations. I'm recording that I now um, on YouTube at the same time. So it's really a cool uh, way to do it. You can brand the background. I can put up banners and uh, all sorts of fun things. So yeah, if you have any questions, it's, it's StreamYard, but let me know. I can always answer. Oh, see, I know I can't. It drives me crazy when I hear all the, the noise. I, I just am a little sensitive to that. So uh, I, I'll listen to it so you guys don't have to. So I'm going with my light again. And now when I go on, because it's a little drier, it uh, pops a little more. And I'm going to pull that right up. My last um, coat is usually whatever the light color is with a little white. 
which actually makes it a little more opaque and really pops. Yellows and oranges in, in acrylics are so transparent. So if you ever run into a problem and you just put in coat after coat of that yellow on, it's not working, either base coat your element or your flower in white and go over it or add a tiny touch of white to your paint and it gives it a little more um, uh, opaqueness, I guess if that's a word. Hey, Zena, good morning. Oh, I know. I had a different background before, and then I made this for one of my uh, promotions for my membership, and I love the way it looks, so I'm using it. Again, so you can. You can design your own background and uh, pop it in here. So can you see that difference now? This is just a little duller because it just has the first two colors, but this I've added on, and I know it's hard to see on camera, but you can still see my yellow ochre and a little bit of my orange underneath, and I'm just going to quickly... Quickly sometimes is better because you're not thinking about it too much. There is texture sewing through here from the canvas still. And it's if I glide the paint lightly across the top, I get that texture, which I like. You can see on this one. Um, see how it looks a little bit rough? That's the texture of the canvas. And that that is, is uh, just the way it works. And it kind of is a cool look. I'm dying to do some Halloween ones with pumpkins and bats and switches and things too. But like this little, like um, I do a lot of illustrating and surface pattern design, which is designing repeating patterns for fabric and, and home decor and notebooks and all that. And it's so fun, even if you're doing it with painting, you don't have to think of it always as a scene. It could just be free floating little elements like this and they're repeating. And I just am doing the same idea only here with the with the little tote bag design. But I tell you, I this is a game changer doing this little square in the back for me because I've always had these little flowers just floating. This really gives you a nice look. Wait till you see when it's all done. And I'm just going to dry my brush off as I go. And I'm going to add a little more white to my, I don't know if I'll go with this bright yellow. Let's try it. Eh, it's okay. It's just something lighter. I'm adding a little white to one of my light yellows here. I don't know if I love it. I'm going to try my light yellow with the white. Isn't this great? This is like on the fly, just having fun. And I want you to paint and have fun. I don't want you to stress. I don't want you to say, oh, I can't do it. I wasn't born with that talent. I can't paint. Everybody's not born with the talent. It's something that you can learn and practice and just have fun with. And it doesn't, there's no rules. It doesn't have to look like a photo. That's the big myth right there, guys. The, um, you're not an you know you're not becoming an artist because oh your painting looks like a photo, it's not that's not the biggest compliment. Oh your painting looks just like a photo. You, we can have a million photos on our phone. We want something that's got your personality, got some whimsy, some color, some wonkiness, and that's what's fun to look at as a you know as a decorative thing or or even as my paintings, my fine art paintings, my plein air paintings. I really put colors in that don't belong. Uh, change around the, the compositions. I do whatever I want on the on the fly and it just infuses your personality and and that's what makes it cool and fun. And you guys know that. Some of my guys know that. Oh, Jessica brushes. You can get these hog bristle brushes really at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or any of the art stores. But look in the fine art section for the oil painting and acrylic painting section and their hog bristle brushes. I love them for canvas painting for fabric painting they are stiff and they dig into the paint you can get texture and doing snow and you don't need a lot of them you can get maybe two I, I have a few sizes but i do like to have a big one and i love this little size and that would be all you'd really need to start and see if you like them but for any kind of canvas landscape painting i use them for my plein air painting you wouldn't use them for watercolor because they're too stiff but you you'll use them a lot um painting and I will always go finish up and use my little acrylics for fine strokes and softer things and blending but these guys are pretty cool you could even go now I'm getting lighter shades you can even dip right into the white and, and use it because be, there's so much yellow on my brush it's going to still be a little yellow but it will show up nice and it's hard to know where to stop sometimes but just sometimes stop and then just go on to the next bit you can always go back when it's dry Sometimes I'll go back and pop a nice white highlight in there if I need to. Let me pull it up closer so you can see. It's not perfect, but it's just, it's kind of rough, but it's going to look great when it's all done. I'm going to go into my leaves now. Sort of a similar thing. I will wash my brush off because I am going to a different color. Hello. Hello, everybody. 
Thank you, guys. You guys are great to come out this time of the morning and watch, although I, I know it's different times for all of you. So it's nice sometimes for me to come on early because then it is a little later for you guys on the other coast. Thank you. I love purples and orange and yellow. And um, when you're doing a sunflower, anything yellow, add some purple, whether it's the background or another element. Or sometimes I add purple right into my centers of my flowers. Um, purple really goes nice with the yellow. Centers of the flowers, actually, speaking of those, let me pop them in now because they, I want them to dry a minute and then they'll dry while we do our leaves. The sunflower, the Black Eyed Susan centers are pretty dark. My burnt umber paint here is just not dark enough, so I just put a little black in and I just simply put a little blob in the middle. I'm not working hard here, you guys. You can see. Try it out. Have fun. Don't stress. Don't make it a big deal and just have fun. It's acrylic paint. You could paint completely over it if you don't like it. You can start over. You can paint over so it's not it's not a big um it's not a big deal you to correct and fix things just have fun with it if you have fun with it it's going to show in your painting i know it is and uh there i might dab a little bit of the lighter uh burnt sienna which is that red brown just a daub on top when that dries a bit hey jeanette good morning from arkansas good morning from maine here this morning in florida deb i talked to you yeah you know my florida is my uh go-to place too Okay, so we've got our dark leaves on there. I'm going to use that same brush. I'm going to just kind of dry brush a little bit of the lighter green on there. I'm going to take my cad yellow and my phthalo green and just get a nice pretty green. I'm going to save that apple green for last just to give a few touches here and there. Although, to be honest, I could mix that color with these colors very easily. You don't need all the colors also. That's another thing. You could get your primaries and mix many, many colors. Um, but it is fun to go in and buy all the colors. Anyway, so I've got a lighter green, and I'm just kind of going to go on top of the leaves a little bit here and there. I'm not copying them exactly. I'm just taking that dark base I made for myself and just kind of popping in a little bit of the lighter green here and there. I'm not even thinking so much about a lot of times when we're doing a nice still life or whatever we're painting. You really have to think about your light source and where your lights would be, your highlights and your and your shadows and kind of keep them consistent. This is a little surface pattern. We don't care. It just wants a little bit of light on our dark. And it's just a little dab here and there. And it's funny on camera. It's much brighter to me here, but it's very dark on camera still. So I'm going to go pretty light now just so you guys can see it. But that's another thing, and I know you've probably heard me say it a million times, but if you're painting and you want to check your painting or you think something's wrong, take a picture of it or hold it up in a mirror because it's precisely what's happening with me. When I watch myself painting, I can see a mistake on the camera, on the video, not here. It's just something about your eye just lets go, and, and you can see something's a little off, something's too dark, too light. So do stand back all the time as well. Look at your paintings. But if you take a picture of it or just look at it in the mirror, your eye's going to see any little imperfection or things that um, are bothering you. Not really imperfections because I'm telling you guys it really shouldn't be perfect. But just something like the brightness of this is now you can see how bright that is. It just looks a little better because someone who sees this when it's done, it's going to be from a distance. It's not going to be up close like you're painting now. So I want it to have a little pop of bright color. So now, because I saw in the video it was too dark, I've got that bright color. Good morning, Lisa Marie. Yes, wouldn't they be great? I thought, um, I'm a little late here, but wouldn't it be cute with um, a background painted and then paint apples, the pencils, school supplies, and be for a teacher gift? I think that would be perfect. So we can plan ahead now for the end of school next year, and you're ahead of yourself. Teacher gift would be great because they probably don't need another mug. Um, so anyways, thank you. So We've done our flowers, got the centers in there, did some leaves. I would maybe put some little veins in these leaves. If you wanted to, you could even take little pops of yellow, put those in the leaves. It's almost like a little reflection sometimes of your flower. I pop colors in that don't belong all the time everywhere. You could pop a little orange in there because you have orange in your flowers. I would probably go and make some smaller leaves here and there. And I'm just going to take, I, I make my one stroke leaves. We did them with the big brush. I want to do little ones. I'm just going to use a small brush that's about the size of the leaf I want to make. I'm just going to use that light apple green. I'm not going to shade or anything. I'm just going to pop in some little leaves 
just to fill it in. When I'm doing my pattern designs, I do like to fill in some of the places. And you can even do some that are three together, two together. You could do this as a little vine maybe coming out. I'll show you real quick, close up that. If you wanted, you could take a little white on the brush at the same time and have it like a little two-tone. But I think this is going to serve the purpose. I am just putting them, remember we'll come out off the edge sometime because when we pull that tape off, we'll have a nice little straight edge, hopefully if my paint didn't bleed under. And just put some of these in to just add a little interest. These are the same way I'm doing the leaves that I did the big leaves. Even though it's small, I am just pressing my brush down and pulling, and I get a little leaf shape, pressing and pulling. It's really almost like just pressing the, leaf, the brush down there. And I just pull it and make it a little bit like an edge. And there we go. You could leave it as that. You could put little dots of color with the end of your brush in there. Like uh, sometimes I use a little dotting tool or simply the edge of end of my brush. So say we want to just do some dots here and there. You could have done the spattering. I would have done that first, like I showed you that other bag. I'll pull that out again and show you that too. You could leave a space in the middle and paint all around it and then write a name on there and personalize it. That might be a cute idea. That would be good. You could just script it. You could probably use your paint markers for that. That would be an easy way to write. I'm going to just pop in a little bit, uh, rinse that green off my brush and I'm gonna pop a little burnt sienna or maybe orange in the center of those little flowers. Yep, burnt sienna works. We'll just put that in the middle. If this was a big flower, a big still life, I would put a lot more effort into um, the centers and the flowers and shading and highlighting. But this is really fun. I love doing this little, little designs like this. Again, it doesn't have to always be a scene. It could be just a little design. And I will do it on here. I know it's a little um, small and you could probably be finished now. It could very well be easily finished. Oh, yeah, you can watch the replay. It's almost done, and you've seen most of it. Hey, Chris, thank you. Um, so if you look real close at this little, these little flowers, see how I have little pollen dots around the centers? See, like little dots? I just uh, do those in all different colors. They look more white there. But you can use a little dotting tool, a little stylus if you want, or the back end of a brush. And all I do is take any colors I have on my palette and I just dot them around the center. I do not worry about where they're going. They touch the center, they touch the petal, they're in between. I'm not placing them perfectly. I'm just putting them on there. And I do them in some orange maybe and whatever color we have. Again, it could be finished like it was, but I have to always add that last little touch. <laughs> it's almost like I need to be told to step away from my painting sometimes. This might be better if they were dry, but we're gonna do it right now while they're wet so you can see just little white dots. Sometimes I'll give the middle of the flower a little white dot just for fun. This is more of a decorative painting than um, realistic. I always tell people it's, it's not fine art, it's fun art. But even my fine art is fun art. I still have fun with um, all my painting. I'm an oil painter, and that's my favorite medium, and I've done that since I was about 10. Um, but I still have fun with that. I love the colors I can get there sometimes. So a little white, maybe some of the orange, just pop around. Just adds a little interest, a little something, something. I'm kind of watching the time, and we still have plenty of time. These are quick. If you wanted to do a bunch as gifts, or this would be a great item if you're doing craft fairs and art shows. Hey, good morning, Bonnie. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Um, these would be a great item because you could line them up and do all of the backgrounds, have fun with them, have the kids help. Lisa Marie has some little helpers. They could help you. And then put whatever you want on them or have a project, great project for the kids. Just tape off the edges pretty well and they and then let them go ahead and paint right in the center write their names use the paint markers paint markers are fabulous for a lot of things too 
Okay. Oh, the little flowers, if you wanted to add, because we have some minutes. Again, this could be done a while ago. It doesn't have to be this complicated, although in 45 minutes, it's not really complicated. Right, Lisa Marie, that would be fun. They would have a blast. They could paint their kitty cats and all kinds of things. So I will go ahead now with my little brush that I use for those tiny leaves. Same idea. It's a great size to have for little things. And just like I painted those big flowers, you could just go ahead and paint some little white flowers, not shaded or anything, just popped on there like that. But because it's going to have a yellow center and that purple behind, wouldn't it will never show. I pop in a little center of white to start. Many times it's not even a whole flower. It's just three little petals peeking out. So just kind of put those in for some interest wherever you like, but pop in the center with a little bit of white. And then when we go ahead and put yellow on top, it'll, it'll show nicely. And like I said, any way you want, popping off the edge. Remember to use that edge because it's going to be cool later. And you could almost go and do most of them as little petals peeking out behind the bigger guys. And then I simply just put a little bit of yellow in the middle and I don't, do any shading or much on these guys. They can be peeking out from behind a leaf. And we've plenty of time here. So if you have any questions, put them in there because I have minutes to uh, answer as well. And I'm going to just put a little yellow center. Oh, we got to leave time, of course, to do the big reveal because that is my favorite part is pulling that tape off. It's so fun. How sad that's my highlight of my morning is getting that the big reveal. Okay. If you want to put veins, you can. I um, would do them usually with my liner brush, which is a great brush for long, thin lines. It's the, the reason these guys work so well. It's a big, big, um, long tipped brush, but it allows you to hold a lot of paint in there and get a lot of strokes before you have to go and reload. And I do mix my paint with a good bit of water. Number one, it's been sitting out for a little while and it's thickened up. <clears throat> but I want to do a nice long vein stroke without having to reload the brush all the time. So thinning it down for any sort of uh, detail work, the paint is, is a good idea. I know, Lisa, isn't it? Lisa Marie. I know, that's the best part. So I'm just simply going to make a few little veins. And look how many I can do at once because the paint's thin and it's going right along and I don't need to reload for every leaf. And I'll pop this up to the camera in a sec so you can see it. Who's going to go and try and paint tote bags? Raise your hand. This, this would be good painted on anything, by the way. You don't have to just do it on a tote bag. You can paint it on any little decorative thing, a wooden box, um, you name it. And actually, that taping off idea would work on any of those wooden plaques and things as well. Okay. So it was just some simple little veins. I would sometimes do that even coming out of my petals if you wanted to. But I don't think we need to do that on this. So let's pull off the tape. <laughs> Let me move this stuff away. I was I was really optimistic because I was going to take this other one and start it. And I probably will after I'm done and you guys can see it later on a recording or something on this teal colored one. I'm going to paint some little ghosts and witches and things. Um, and OK, so let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, without it, it, I would probably wait till it dries if I were you guys. Hey, Katie, good morning. And Maureen, good morning. It is easy, Chris. Oh, no, who said uh, Maureen, it is easy. I make it easy when I'm painting. I put it step by baby step for you, and I can have you painting in no time. But look at that. Ooh, so cool. Oh, Darla, Dahlia, thank you for sharing. If you guys would, I would love it if you should. Oh, um, um, sprinkled. Um, the book doesn't like that other word. Um, so I would love it if you let your friends know who like to craft or paint then I'm here and give me a follow and um, see all the cool things I end up painting. I paint a lot of things that aren't canvases and traditional. I paint on crazy things. You probably saw my bowling pin painting. And let's watch the time. We have a minute. Oh, thanks, Laurie. Oh, hey, Rose. Rose is my neighbor at home um, and paints with me. Thank you. This is so fun. I, I don't even know where I got all these tote bags, but I have a ton of them, Rose. If you want to paint some, let me know. I'll get you some. I have a, um, a bunch here, and I'd be happy to share. 
and Katie. Um, you know what? This is just um, a blue tape. I like this blue tape for my artwork when I'm doing um, watercolor and whatnot because it will not rip the paper. So it's kind of an artist tape. But for this, you could use masking tape or whatever you have. It doesn't have to be this. But this is a nice tape to have for some projects. Joey, I missed part. Yeah, it's pretty easy and simple. Oh, ice skates. Yeah, Lisa Marie, I did paint ice skates last winter, and I have one left. I'll paint another one. Uh, Maria, thank you. I love it that you um, that you love it. Okay, and Sue, Marie, thank you. Um, any other questions? We're gonna oh, we're gonna wrap up now. It's nine fifteen. Thank you for spending the morning. I really appreciate it. And this will be out um, shortly for you. I, I usually post it the next day once I take some photos and whatnot. And uh, I love bold colors. Yeah, Zina, you know that. So I'm going to go and watch now. The next person's coming up right behind me, and it's going to be a great day for crafting. Thank you, guys. See you soon.